Hello, now looking at a few more communication methods. These ones I'm trying to categorize as being mostly audio and or video based as opposed to purely just text like the last video. So it starts you off with phone calls effectively, right? You can call people up to share information. It's a very simple and uh, method which has been around for a long time. A more modern version of just a phone call is voice over internet protocol, often shortened to VoIP. So VoIP is a a method of protocol allowing you to use telephone telephone calls over the internet. So instead of your phone connecting up to a satellite or to a radio tower or to a telephone line, instead you're going via the internet. Okay, and usually it'll be your phone or your laptop. It won't be an old-fashioned phone like I've got in the picture. But the idea is you are able to call people up over the internet using the internet protocol. You know, we don't need to use cellular, we don't need to use PSTN networks, um, just the internet is what's needed. Okay, and so examples of this are things like Microsoft Teams and Zoom. So they allow VoIP calls to be made for free, although in most cases they are, they have paid versions, so they are um, freeware. Now I'm sure you've used either both or one of those two applications, and they are video calls. Now video calls can be, you, they can use VoIP, but VoIP on its own usually just means audio only. Okay, so another example would be something like FaceTime audio. Again, FaceTime has got a video component, but pure VoIP is just audio. Now in terms of why you might use a VoIP application or just phone calls generally, well you can quickly share information, right? You just call somebody up and you can talk to them in real time. There is no delay between you speaking to them. It's also targeted, right? You specify who you're calling. You're not calling a random person. You are putting in a number and you are making sure that person gets the information. Of course, if somebody picks up and you speak to them, you know they've understood the information, whereas something like an email or a message, you might not actually know they've received it if they don't reply to you, for example. Um, but also in terms of maybe negative points, people you're calling have to, of course, have hardware, such as a microphone, software, which is VoIP in this case, and also, crucially, a internet connection. Without any of those um, things, the VoIP call won't really work. So there are certain limitations to do with hardware and software and connectivity. Just finally, in terms of the you know, limitations of phone calls, well, of course, phone calls, you are hearing somebody's voice, but you can't tell, you can't always tell what they are thinking. You can't always see their body language, which helps you communicate. You can usually tell if somebody's really angry, for example, or is very happy, but it's not quite as clear as a video call would be, for example. Another example of a communication method on a separate theme are personal assistants, also called virtual assistants. So these virtual assistants, things like Siri and Alexa and Cortana, which is Microsoft One, are bits of software which are able to respond to your voice. So we have voice recognition, but also often they've got a written feature. So for Siri, you can type instructions, not just speak, right? But the idea is it's software trying to mimic a real personal assistant, somebody who might help you. So therefore they do fairly common tasks, things like play music or add an event to a calendar, but also dictate messages. So in terms of communication, you might be, for example, driving and say, hey Siri, can you send a message to so-and-so? You might be able to give a message and it might be able to send it on your behalf. That'd be useful in terms of quick communication. You don't need to even type anything, you can just speak it, that's much faster. But of course, as you might know from first-hand experience, they don't always understand your commands. It's not perfect voice recognition. So for example, you might ask Alexa to send an email for you and it might misinterpret and what's actually sent might be different or might get sent to the wrong person, which would obviously be a bit of an issue. But also generally, there are some privacy issues. The idea that these devices are always listening to you might make you a little bit nervous, especially if you're discussing sensitive information. And the third and final method I want to cover are conferencing software. So conferencing software, generally speaking, is where you're communicating with multiple people. A VoIP call could, of course, be to multiple people, but a phone call is usually to one person. You don't really have group phone calls as often. So conferencing software is designed to communicate with lots of people at once, potentially. So teleconferencing is the term for just generally a big call, either video or audio, lots of people generally it's just like a phone call to a group of people so this zoom call here could be considered tele teleconferencing but more likely is considered video conferencing we've got a video as your main communication method 
So very slight distinction, teleconference is usually a phone call. Video conferencing is always both video and audio, but they're very similar and are used interchangeably. In terms of why you might use conferencing software, well, if you've got video in particular, you're able to see body language. Certain things might not get conveyed properly over email, over text, over phone calls. You might have had experience of getting somebody not quite understand what you mean, or you might misread somebody. If you see them at least, you've got a better sense of what they are thinking and what they are actually meaning. And of course, as you've used, I'm sure, there are certain features built in, like the ability to share screens and to record and to attach files during a video call. This enables you to collaborate and just work together a bit better. But because all of this is going through the internet, perhaps using VoIP, there may well be lag, depending on your connections. So as you've seen and heard, video calls are not always particularly stable. And also, there might be miscommunication. That can be linked to lag. So for example, one person might lag and they might not be able to hear you or you can't hear them. You might talk over somebody, somebody might drop out, somebody might leave their microphone on by mistake. There are lots of slight awkward issues which can happen when you have big video calls. You might find that actually it's much more effective to do it in person if you are able to or send information over email. It's just less chance of miscommunication.